guys, welcome to my May setup, and I know I'm late with this, but I had that craft fair this past Saturday, and it really just ate up my time. Uh, because of that, I unfortunately wasn't able to actually illustrate this book cover, but I wanted to share this version of The Lord of the Rings because a lot of people don't know about it. And I definitely wanted to share with you guys because I think it's just so amazing. Um, this whole series was done by a Chinese artist named Jian Guo. And I know I'm probably butchering that, but he does these amazing illustrations that mimic stained glass. I'll put his deviant art page in the description, but his work is just incredible. If you have the time, I definitely suggest checking him out. Um, I also thought this would be a good time to kind of show you how you can take design elements from something you didn't actually draw yourself and kind of build a theme around it. I'll explain as I go through this setup about that concept a little more, but for now let's jump right in with my mood page. I'm actually going to be using some colored inks for this setup because I wanted several different opacities of the same color and I really couldn't get that with my Crayola Super Tips. Uh, for this setup, and I'm coloring in my 3D blocks where I'm not working at my main job. That's how I set up my mood page and I am going to be using these inks for the whole setup because I wanted different opacities of the same color and I really couldn't get that with my Crayola Super Tips. I also have this font that I am trying to use that's sort of inspired by like Elvish. Um, I tried to take inspiration from that font anyways because it's so Lord of the Rings and it's so identifiable uh, but I still wanted it to be readable, so I kind of had to mix like normal type and that font. And then I'm just going to use some double sided tape to put the cover page in. And then I am moving on to my expenses tracker. Now I have been doing this expense tracker for a while and those of you who have followed the channel really are familiar with it. Um, the only thing that has changed right now is that I've taken out the craft fair expenses box because that's over. But for those who are kind of new to the channel, I colored in this top box to track what's coming in, so my income. And then the second box on this page is for my monthly bills, so kind of expected expenses. And then the third box is specifically for personal expenses, like if I go out to eat with friends or if I want to buy a book or a movie or things like that, just so I can keep an eye on it and make sure it doesn't go out of control. Now my next spread is my memories page in my fitness tracker. The memories page is going to stay blank, obviously because I haven't made any yet, but the fitness tracker is just a grid that alternates between green and gold for the number headers because those are the colors on the cover and then I just made a really simple grid with it um, so I can fill in kind of what exercises I'm doing each day. Um, I probably could have used washi tape to make these lines a little neater, but I don't really mind the imperfections here because it kind of reminds me of the handmade feel and handwritten vibes that uh, books in The Lord of the Rings have, like Bilbo's journey there and back again. Um, so I really don't mind it. And I've also taken some design inspiration for the background elements on this page from the cover. So I took the uh, rock formations, the iconic bridge, and then the trees that kind of look like ginkgo leaves. Um, and I've also taken this kind of bird design detail from this side to put under the top header so it almost looks like it's underlining the header itself um, but this is a really great way to use your source material or your inspiration for your spread to pull in uh, design elements and make things really cohesive and you will see more of these elements as we go through the weeklies as well. I also go through 
after I stop recording and add in some black lining here that you'll see during the flip through, but that's basically it for this page. Next, I'm going to move on to my weeklies and I'm going to switch between green and yellow. And for the drawings on each page, I've kind of blown up each character in the style of the cover to use in my design. I just loved how the artist simplify these characters into these shapes because it is a lot harder than people think to to simplify something based off of something realistic, especially when you're using a very limited color palette. And he did it extremely well. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get a really high quality picture of the cover design. So I kind of just blew up these uh, characters based on what I could see. And by putting a character on each page, it kind of just makes them look really unique. And it was also kind of an opportunity for me to turn my brain off because I didn't have to go out of my way to draw something really original or unique because I was just kind of copying from the original inspiration and source material. Um, the first week here is Legolas, then Gimli, Aragorn, Gandalf, and lastly Little Frodo. Um, I'm using a couple different washes of green or yellow to differentiate between some of these shapes and then filling them in with different washes to kind of bring out the shapes a little bit. I'm also bringing back some of those background elements like the ginkgo leaf trees or the sharp design on the sides with the birds, with Gimli, and then the rock formations as well. But the layout of my weeklies have kind of stayed the same. I'm not going to go into explaining it all again. If you want to see how this weekly works, check out my January setup video where I kind of make it for the first time. And if you have a favorite cover of The Lord of the Rings, let me know in the comments because there are some really amazing ones out there. I know Johan Agurkrens really did a cool set of covers and another independent artist who does book cover redesigns runs Nerdy Ink. And I will link their website down in the description, but she does some pretty awesome covers as well. Uh, next month, I will be back to drawing my own book covers. I'm sorry I didn't get a chance to do it this month, but I was just so busy with the craft fair that I just really didn't have time for it. Um, and speaking of the craft fair, actually, I want to take a quick break before we go through the flip through um, to show these Nordic bookmarks, which I finally got printed. I've been trying to get them made since I finished them this past December. Um, if you're interested in buying some, they are live on my Etsy page, along with everything else I made for the craft fair. I don't want to bog down the video too much with just stuff that I have on my Etsy page, so I'm going to leave it at these bookmarks, but I will post the other stuff on my Insta and Facebook when I have the time. And anyways, here's the flip through. I think I am going to work on a book cover for the seven and a half deaths of evil in Hardcastle for next month. If you guys haven't read that one, I highly recommend it because it is amazing and the plot twists just kept coming. I, I'd never guessed the ending um, and I'm normally pretty good about that. So leave a comment if you have read it and you agree or if you have any other book recommendations for me. I hope you guys have a great night and I'll see you in the next one.